Good morning. Welcome to uh, the lesson today. We're doing a lesson in Proverbs today. This will be lesson number three. Uh, the topic of this lesson is, Wilt thou receive? Wilt thou receive? Do you desire to listen? Do you desire to hear? Okay. Do you desire to accept God's word for what it says to you? So let's say a, a quick word of prayer, and then we're going to read uh, Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, oh God, and Lord, we ask you just please help me, Lord, as I teach this lesson today. Please lead and guide me and give me the words you have me to say. Oh Lord, I ask you just please be with the people that listen to this lesson, that they will hear and receive your words. Oh God, please help me. You know I'm tired and please give me the strength to, uh, to get through this lesson, Lord. And we praise thee, O oh Lord Jesus, and we thank thee for all that you do. Please bless your word, O Lord, as it goes forth. And in your name, Jesus, amen. All right, so Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1 through 2. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. So the question he is, has here, wilt thou receive? A father's desire. Every father's desire is, wilt his children receive his words of wisdom. A father that loves the word of God. So wilt is an old, old word, ethelko, ethelko, to imply, to wish, or to be inclined, where a father would wish that his son would listen a wish that the son would internalize, a wish that maybe the child would use the words of the father in his life, the words that come from God's word, okay, the precepts of God that the father shares. So the father says, the Solomon says, my son, if thou wilt receive my words, my son, if thou, if thou, if you just would maybe just pause and listen for a moment, think for a moment at what I'm about to say, take these words down. I want to give you all the knowledge that God has given me that from the reading and study of his word. Uh, son, please listen to what I'm about to say. Please receive these words I'm about to give you. I give you the words from the depths of my heart and soul for you so that you can grow up and be a functioning, healthy adult. One of the greatest desires in life is that my children, my children, would listen and follow my words, that they would use the wisdom that I have tried to impart to them, that they would come to know Jesus and love Jesus the way I love and know Jesus should not this be the desire of every parent? I think it is. I think it's a wonderful desire. But children, children, they have their own minds. They have their own thoughts. They have their own wills. They have their own, their own desires. So a child without or with proper instruction will live their life the way that they see their life is to be lived, okay? So this is why Solomon writes here in Proverbs 22, verse 6, to train up a child. So to train, uh, kanak, to narrow a way for a child, to focus a person, okay? To narrow his way, okay? To initiate a child into life, to discipline that child, to dedicate your time to the child to provide a narrow pathway that the child will travel to give them a focus for the walk in their of their life in the way he should go and when that child is old when he is old he will not depart from it because he's learned the same way of his father so parent you are to decide your time to your child okay you are to decide to dedicate that time, okay? To, to put your effort, uh, your all into your child when they are small. 
you are to start instruction and discipline when they are very young, okay? To raise them up right. You are to train them in the right, the way of wisdom. When they are grown, they will remember and they will travel down that narrow path, okay, that you've trained them in. To finish, to finish verse 2, verse 1, and hide my commandments with thee, okay? Another important thing here. Solomon urges his son to avoid the sin in the previous chapters and the enticement of the wicked by hiding God's word in their heart, just as it says in the book of Psalms, Psalms 119, to hide God's word in your heart so you might not sin against God, okay? Okay, so, so hide God's word in your heart so the son can perceive the right from the wrong in the world, okay? Sometimes this is very hard to do. But with God's word in your heart, you can perceive that right from that wrong. So this hiding is the idea of cherishing, okay? It's like the idea of taking a very expensive jewel and holding it and keeping it and cherishing it. Or maybe some gold or, or something of that nature, something very important, which you keep forever and with it always being right at your side, okay? It's the, hide, that's the idea of hiding, always keeping it next to you. In the next verse, Solomon begins to explain to his son the use of, of his words to his son, why, why he's using these words. And so the purpose for receiving the words, for hiding the commandments. So in verse 2, 2, well in chapter 2, verse 2, so that thou incline thine ear, okay, listening intently, inclining the ear unto the wisdom the father is about to impart to his son. So it's the idea of bending down with the ear to get close to the person with an attentive ear, okay? To hear every word with the ear, to obediently sit still as the person speaks, to follow the words of instruction, okay? And then to take that instruction and hide it inside you, okay? So will you listen to me, okay? Are you going to listen? Um, um, but maybe you're not going to hear, okay? So will we listen to the words of God, okay? Or are we actually going to hear what the word of God is going to say? So to hear, wilt thou receive, please, wilt thou receive what I've got to say to you? In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 3, it states, incline your ear and come unto me, hear, and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. So this is the gospel, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the sure mercies that come from the covenant promises in David's line, okay? The dynasty that would culminate with the Messiah, with Jesus Christ, here and your soul shall live, okay? He will make your soul alive again. But wilt thou receive? Wilt thou just receive these words? Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 15. Hear ye and give ear, okay? Listen. Please listen when you hear. So give ear. Be not proud, okay? Don't let your pride or your thoughts seep up in your mind. Just listen and hear what's being said. Let it go into you, okay? Be not proud, for the Lord hath spoken. So these are his words and not, not ours. Simple pride often stops a person's ears and carries the seeds of its own destruction. So simple pride will stop your ears and make your mind start thinking and then you will no longer hear, okay? All right, so th this whole idea here is people tend to refuse to listen and to then hear. They can't hear anymore. What they do is they're thinking about why they're frustrated with the words that have been spoken, all right? So the, the pride, when pride gets into your mind, it gets into the way of hearing. So Solomon states in the rest of that verse, and apply thine heart to understanding, okay? What does it mean? So apply thine heart to understanding. What does it mean by the application of the heart? So the word heart is an old Hebrew word, lib, lib. 
that stands for the mind, okay? Your understanding of things, your comprehension, all right? Your intent, okay? So how you hear from the words that were spoken. So did you hear and internalize? Or did you hear and it upset you, pride set in, and you no longer heard? So folks, do you listen and think about what's said and internalize it, accept it? Or does the hair rise upon the back of your neck and you get irritated and you try and figure out a way to get back at the person who's speaking at you, okay? So B.R. Lakin stated many years ago about the cat. He said, if the cat's fur comes up on its end, tell the cat to turn around so that it can be rubbed the right way, okay? And no longer be irritated. So, because if you rub the cat the wrong way, his fur will stand up on end. When you turn the cat around and rub it the right way, so just let the cat turn around, okay? All right? So, where does your understanding come from in life? Is it biblical? Is it based on a Christian worldview? Do you actually seek the knowledge of God from the Bible? So here's another question for you that you think about. Do you spend enough time in the Bible? Do you spend time daily in the Bible? Okay. Proverbs chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, so how often do you pray for the guidance of the Holy Spirit before you study the Bible? How often, okay? Do you really, as a person, desire understanding? Okay, do you really desire understanding? And lift us up thy voice for understanding, okay? Do you cry out? Do you lift up your voice to God daily? Do you cry out to the Holy Spirit for understanding? In James 1, 5, it states, if any lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, okay? God's willing to give you wisdom, okay? You've just got to ask for it. You've got to come to him in prayer, okay? You've got to humble yourself before God. Next verse, verse four. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure. So last week, if you remember, uh, um, so wisdom cries out in the streets, okay? Wisdom, wisdom, when it cries out, okay? So wisdom cries out for people to come, but people don't seek for it. Wisdom cries out, okay? It's all around us, but people don't seek it, okay? So they are not interested. The Bible is given by the inspiration of God. So it is there for everyone, okay? Uh, the preacher, the evangelist, the teachers, they cry out in the pulpits. They cry out on TV. They cry out on all types of media. You know, I'm crying out on YouTube, all right? So they cry out, okay? But no one listens. You understand what I'm trying to get at here? No one listens, okay? It falls on deaf ears. No one listens, all right? So wisdom cries out, okay? The world has become foolish. As America declines into immorality, it seeks after the wisdom of man. It no longer seeks after the wisdom of God. It no longer only looks at history to understand what immorality does to a nation, okay? Wilt thou receive, okay? Wilt thou receive? Do people today seek the wisdom that is cried out every week around this nation from the pulpit. No, they're like the cat in the tall grass. They're like the cat with the roughed up fur, okay? That refuses to turn around, okay? That's what they're like. Scripture is profitable for doctrine. It's profitable for reproof. It's profitable for correction. It's profitable for instruction, okay? It's profitable for the path of righteousness. Do people want to be reproved or corrected in their lives? No, they don't. People want to go their own way today. So in Psalms 119 verse 9, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? He asks that question. By taking heed thereto according to thy word. So wisdom cries out. 
It cries out, but do you receive it? Do you receive it, okay? To receive means to take it as a gift into your life, to use it, to make it a part of you, to receive, okay? Now, Christian, how do you use the Word of God? Do you see it as the Word of God? Or do you see it as something you bought in a store, okay? Do you take the gift that God is trying to give you out of this Word, and do you use it daily? Do you share it with others? Do you make it a part of your life? Do you use it in your family, okay? Do you use it in your daily walk? Or do you use it in your music, okay? What type of music do you listen to, okay? Re think about this, okay? All right. There's a lot of great old-fashioned music that comes from the Word of God, all right? So what is the Word of God to you? Is it just another hindrance, okay? Or do you take it and you use it for its good doctrine, for its reproof, for its correction? So the words seekest and searchest for hid treasure describe an ancient mining technique where a miner would dig all day searching in the dirt and rock for that hid strain or vein of silver that's deep in the rock or for that nugget of gold. He would dig all day for it, all right? So this is used as an example of how we should search the scriptures, digging all day in it, okay? Pondering over its words, all right? So how do we know, okay? So how do we know? So in, in the book of Job, chapter 28, verses 1 and 2, Job 28, verses 1 and 2, Job 28. Okay. Okay, Job 28, verse 1 and 2. Surely there is a vein for the silver and a place for the gold where they find it. Iron is taken out of the earth and brass is molten out of stone, okay? So um, verse five and six, as for the earth, out of it cometh bread and under it is turned up as if it were fire. Stones of it are the place of sapphires and it hath dust of gold. There is a path which no fowl knoweth, which the vulture's eye hath not seen. The lion whelps hath not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. So Job explains some of these ancient mining techniques here, all right? So, so in Proverbs chapter 2, verse 5, thou sh then shalt thou understand when you seek, okay? Okay, so Proverbs 2, 5, it says, then shalt thou understand. So when you begin to seek, okay, you seek with faith, all right? The object of your faith should always be God, okay? So then shalt thou understand, all right? Okay, when you begin to dig for this, this information, okay? You're going to begin to understand. So then shalt thou understand the fear of God. So the object of your faith as you're digging should be God, okay? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 states, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must, must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of him that diligently seek him, okay? I'll tell you, this is such a key thing. Must believe that he is, okay? All right? So Jesus will not cast you off. His word will not return to him void, and God will provide the understanding and knowledge you seek. He will help you, okay? Must, must believe that he is, okay? All right, Christian, when you seek, you seek a very good thing. This is not, not a waste of effort, a waste of time in any way, shape, or form, okay? It's like looking for that apple crumble pie, so tasty, okay? Very yummy and delightful, when you eat it, okay? It's like looking for that in the refrigerator or the freezer or if your wife makes those pies and it, she's got it hid there, stacked in there, and you're digging one for the apple crumb, okay? Really tasty thing. So the object of genuine faith is always God, okay? You're seeking God. 
Jeremiah states in, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, if any ye shall seek me, if any ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart, how willing are you to humble yourself, okay? So humble your time, humble your schedule, okay? Humble your need for sleep. Humble your need for control of your life. Humble yourself before God, okay? Let him have control. So to seek God, okay, to seek God, okay? It's a people's willingness to repent, okay? To humble themselves, to bend the knee, to seek God with their whole heart, okay? To seek, okay? That's what you're doing. You're making God the focus of your faith, all right? Proverbs 2, verse 5, and find the knowledge of God, okay? This is the rest of verse 5, and find the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God, Elohim, okay? It involves knowing God, okay? Seeking him, the object of your faith, as a person, knowing that he is teaching us. He's working in you, if you're listening right now, teaching us through his word, through his Holy Spirit, through his Son, through our lives, and through his creation, okay? He's working in our lives as we see, observe, hear, and listen. Well, listen and hear. What? Yeah, listen and hear. Hear and listen, yeah. You internalize it, all right? So Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. So Paul states this, that I may know him, okay? Know him, actually know him, okay? You can know Jesus, can know God, okay? Can know the Holy Spirit, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, okay, what he went through on the cross, being made conformable unto his death, okay, that's what we want to get at. We want to get to that depth. Folks, I would like to take a moment or two here and explain the depth of this thought. So please give me a moment because I speak as a man who really lacks understanding. So I recognize that the full understanding of God's word is really not in me at all, okay? I'm just a, a humble farm boy, okay? All right, and by me saying humble farm boy, it means I'm not humble at all, all right? See what I'm getting at, okay? So the really a full understanding of God's word is really not in me. So I have a master's degree in the study of the Bible, okay? So three years of straight every week studying, I studied the Bible, okay? I tore it apart, you know, studying the Hebrew, the Aramaic, the Greek, and I recognize that the further down this rabbit hole I get in the Bible, okay, that, that I had just finished kindergartens on God's word. And it blew my mind. I was like, I don't even understand yet. This is just at a kindergarten level, okay? So the word of God humbled me and it made me realize how little I knew, okay? So sometimes as I study, I feel like that I have just started to really scratch the surface of the Bible, okay? And that the the me, the meat of God's word is still way beyond me, okay? I just started to barely scratch the surface, okay? All right, so this knowledge of God comes from seeking, making him the object of your faith. So seeking the knowledge of the facts of the Bible through faith in God, that he's gonna give it to you. Seeking the Holy Spirit's guidance as you read and study, okay? Um, so, and in seeking daily, you gain experience in your life, okay? You get, get understanding for your daily walk, okay? Uh, you get um, seeking the things of God each day, which then begins to transform you as a person, to make you someone new, okay? And you get transformed through his grace, his mercy, and his testing that God puts into your life. And then you begin to rely more and more on the truth of this word. So when you have problems, you turn to the Bible. You don't turn to some self-help book of the world. You turn to the Bible always, okay? So you begin to rely more on those truths that come from the Bible. So in this, you begin to learn about abiding with Christ, okay? Abiding with him daily, always turning to him every second. A union that you have with Christ. As you acknowledge him more, he will guide your footsteps and your path, all right? And that's the way it works. This is a present, continuing relationship which does not stop on his part ever. It may stop on your part, but never on his part. So the relationship grows 
on your part as you seek him daily. It always grows on your part. You can walk away. He doesn't walk away, okay? And you will fail, all right? But you only grow if you stay with him. All right, so growth comes when you trust during your trials and experience, okay? The power, you, you begin to see the power of God's provision, and you begin to see the power of Christ's resurrection. You begin to see the power of his sufferings, okay, and what it all meant, and what it truly now means to be a child of God, and what the change is is coming to your life. So you learn about the love that Christ had for the Roman soldier that beat him. Okay, you learn about that love, okay? You learn about that love for the Roman soldier that beat Jesus Christ with the whip in the flesh, okay? You learn about that love there, okay? The love of Christ that he has for each one of us, no matter how filthy you may feel, how heavy your sin may be, okay? So each one of us, as Jesus Christ experienced that pain and suffering on the cross. So for each one of us, each and every single person on this earth, okay, the love that he has for us, no matter, no matter how horrible you may think you are, this knowledge, this wisdom that I'm talking about here will humble you because you begin to realize then that you had no hope. And without this Bible and without Jesus Christ on the cross, you had no hope, okay? No hope, like the people at Jericho. And only one family had hope, and that family was Rahab, where she hung a scarlet rope hanging from a window. That scarlet rope that runs through the time to a cross, okay? Which would be the hope of the world, amen? Knowing God as a person, his love for us, what he does for us daily, okay? The fact he holds all things together, by him all things consist, okay? Knowing his word, trusting in his word, placing your faith in him. Your object of your faith should always be him. Proverbs chapter two, verse six, for the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. There is wisdom for those who seek it. Okay, that's what he's saying here, like James 1 verse 5, okay? If you feel like you're lacking wisdom, go to him in prayer and ask for it, okay? It comes out of him. He giveth wisdom. So, for if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him, okay? Wisdom is the wise use of knowledge which helps you to face all your trials with joy and understanding because you know that God's behind your testing, all right? Wilt thou receive what I'm saying? Proverbs 2, verse 7, he layeth up sound wisdom for the righteous. It's there. You just got to ask for it. He is a buckler to all them that walk uprightly. He's going to protect you, okay? Let me ask you, does the world offer sound wisdom? No, it does not, okay? It only makes you stumble. All right, only God can offer sound wisdom. Are you willing to receive this? Are you willing to receive God's word and spend time in it daily, okay? Wilt thou receive? A buckler is a shield, okay, or a small shield. The buckler could easily be gripped by one hand due to its small size, all right, and could be moved quickly to block oncoming blows from the enemy as a person move forward in battle, okay? He that walketh uprightly is a person of integrity. So as you walk or move forward in your Christian character, okay, and your personal integrity in this world, you will receive blows from the lost of this world. It's going to come your way. It's going to come through the devil, okay? It's going to come through his fallen angels, okay? But God will be there by your side, deflecting those blows, okay, that come your way. You will never know how many blows that God has deflected in your life. You're never going to know it until you get to heaven, okay? So, for we walk by faith in this world. That's the object of your faith is God. So, you see the picture here. 
wilt thou receive? Ephesians 6 verse 16 explains this where Paul says, above all, he says, so above all, okay, the armor that God provides. So above all, the armor, uh, the armor that God provides, okay? Because it's about, uh, Ephesians 6 is about putting on the armor of God, okay? So above all the armor that God provides, above all, take the shield of faith. He says, he says pick up the shield of faith, above all, okay? Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darks of the wicked. So when you walk uprightly, you take the shield of faith with you and you can quench those fiery darks of the wicked. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 8 states, He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserveth the way of the saints. So God is the righteous judge, so we have nothing to worry about. He's going to judge us one day. He's the righteous judge. We have nothing to worry about, all right? He protects you as you walk uprightly, where we acknowledge him, and then he directs your path and preserves your way. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 9 then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. All those ways he directs your path, okay? All right, God will lead you to every good path when you acknowledge him. So he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and staff, they comfort me, okay? The truths of the scripture are not all forward, so are not all found on the surface, okay? The truths of the scripture are not all found on the surface, all right? We must dig. We must mine for them as gold and silver. You've got to get into the Bible and study it, all right? So 2 Timothy verses, uh, chapter 2, verse 15, it says, to study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So finally, folks, wilt thou receive? Wilt thou receive? Okay. Think about it. Or will you reject the idea of studying in God's word? How much time do you spend? Where is your wisdom based? Is it based on the world or is it based on God? Have you surrendered to the will of God, Christian? Some good questions to think about. Hope you have a good day. Thank you for listening.